Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled My First Engine Failure, T-38 Solo Student. Now, I'm sure everybody remembers their first kiss, their first car, and I'm sure you remember your first engine failure. Well, this was my first as a T-38 Solo Student. Now, I've had roughly 20 engine events. Some of them were, were failures where the engine quit. Sometimes I got it restarted. Sometimes the engine had severe damage and it wasn't able to restart. And a fire is kind of considered uh, severe damage. It wasn't able to restart. Other ones, um, it was an issue like uh, oil pressure or, or um, oil quantity, things like that, where you where you could keep the engine running, but you, you ran it at reduced power. And I'll, I'll tell a few of those stories later on. Now, I was a student out at Vance, and this is a picture of Vance Air Force Base. The blue arrow points to the outside runway that we did patterns on in T-38s. On the left side, uh, that short little runway there, that 5,000 foot runway, is the T-37 runway. The center runway is our typical uh, takeoff runway th for 38s and the uh, runway for instrument approaches. And the outside runway there is 9,200 feet long, and that may seem like a lot of runway, but when you're going at the speeds that the T-38 goes at, yeah, you chew that up pretty fast. And there's the runway again uh, next to the blue arrow. Well, I was out on a uh, typical solo mission. You go out to the area, you do some aerobatics and stuff like that. You burn up a little fuel. Uh, you practice the various maneuvers. And now you're coming on back. Come down initial at 300 knots, pitch out, come around. And I had shot a few patterns. Everything was going nicely and I'm having a fun time and I still got gas, so I'm shooting a few patterns, and I touched down. Okay, that's fine. I advanced the throttles. You touch down around 130 knots or so, a little faster. I advanced the throttles. You accelerate typically to 155 knots or so for a, a normal takeoff speed. Uh, so I advanced the, the power, and I glance down at the engines, and I see both of them coming up. And, okay, that's great. Then... All of a sudden, it, it seems like it's not accelerating as fast. And I look down, and I see that the left engine is unwinding. And I go, hmm, this definitely does not look good. So I'm looking at the runway left. I don't have a lot of runway. I'm, I'm doing about 150 knots or so. And uh, if I'm in a single engine situation, I'm going to need plus 10 on that 155. So I'm going to need 165 plus. So I uh, decide, yeah. I do the, uh, the typical single engine situation and I put uh, both throttles full afterburner. Well, of course, the left engine, um, if it's not running, that's not going to help very much. But the right engine comes in in burner and away we go. I start to accelerate and I get the thing airborne there. And there's a provision in the start function of the T-38. It's an alternate air start. Normally, you want to have about 250 knots. You need to be below 26,000 feet and you'll get enough airflow through the engine. There's no, uh, people who aren't familiar with this, there, there's no sort of starter on the engine. It's at this point, it's just airflow. You start them on the ground using external air. So the only thing that's going to get this engine started is air flowing through it. And I'm probably close to 200 knots as I'm climbing out. And I notice the gear is retracting slowly. Well, with the left engine uh, not producing a lot of RPM, most likely that's the situation. Because I'm kind of looking out front flying the aircraft, making sure I can keep the thing flying. Uh, but the gear is slow coming up, so that's kind of an indication the left engine uh, isn't working very well. But I'm passing through 200 knots, and I call on the, uh, I call on the uh, departure frequency, the, the RSU frequency, runway supervisory unit, the little frequency we're using for that runway. I call that I've had an engine failure. Well, about a second or so later, all of a sudden, that engine kicks in, and now I got full afterburner on it. I go, okay, well, that's good. I'm getting, I got the gear up, I've got it cleaned up now, and I said, well, I got the engine back. And they say, okay, well, come around land. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to do, because uh, I'm not, I'm not really going to keep this thing flying. And by keep this thing flying, I mean, I'm not going to shoot another three patterns before I come up and into land. It's it's time to come back around and land. So I bring it around. I come in and I do a normal landing and well, everything's going fine. Just do a normal landing. Both engines are running and I, and I uh, taxi back in to the ramp area and park it and uh, uh, shut down and uh, tell maintenance all about the, uh, the situation and write up that the, uh, the engine had quit on me. 
I'm sure all ATC bases have an engine test cell run area, and we had one at Vance, and I thought, well, this is kind of interesting. This is a little unusual, and they're going to pull the engine, they're going to run it, and uh, I was talking to my flight commander about it, and uh, he said, well, they're going to be running it tonight. Uh, you know, if you want to come over and kind of watch it, that'd be fun. So I thought, oh, why not? I kind of see how this goes. So I saw how they pull the engine out, they put it in a test cell, they hook the whole thing up, they get in there and they run it. And they, uh, they bring the power up. They start the engine. They bring the power up. They go into full power. That's fine. It runs. They go into afterburn. That's fine. It runs. Okay. They pull it back out. It runs. And I go, well, that's a little strange. I wondered why it, uh, you know, it seems to be operating fine. They cycled it a few times. And about the third time they cycled it, they, they put it up into a hundred percent known as full military power and pop, the engine rolls back and quits. And the guy looks at me and he goes, Hmm, I think there's something wrong with your engine. And I go, yeah, I think that's probably probably a good idea, you know. So uh, they uh, they found some issue with the fuel control. I guess there was something uh, that wasn't just quite right in that, and they uh, they uh, fixed that, and uh, the engine was back in another aircraft operating later. So anyway, that's the story of my very first engine failure.